The computer, tablet, or TV you are watching this lesson on is a collection of chips, wires, and circuits all sending signals to one another in order to interpret their environment and produce a response, image, or sound. This is exactly what your nervous system does as well. Your nervous system is a collection of cells, molecules, and neuronal circuits that interpret your environment and respond to it with movement and sound. In cases of nervous system injury, it's important to diagnose how severe a problem is or what it may be a result of. Just like you can run diagnostic tests on your PC, so too can doctors conduct certain tests that clue them into the cause of a problem affecting the nervous system or indicate the severity of the problem. As a case in point of the latter, there's something known as the Glasgow Coma Scale, which is a scale that was designed to assess and monitor the duration and depth of a person's impaired consciousness or coma as a result of various disease processes. This scale tests a person's eye, motor, and verbal response to a variety of stimuli. The grades for each portion of the tests are added up to classify the extent of brain injury. These cumulative scores range from a minimum of 3 to a maximum of 15. Scores of 8 or less signify severe head injury. Scores of 9 to 12 indicate moderate head injury and scores of 13 to 15 indicate mild head injury. Finally, scores between 3 and 8 are indicative of a coma as a result of no eye opening, no ability to follow any commands, and no verbalization of words. For the eye opening response, there are four grades. A 4 is given to a patient that opens their eyes spontaneously, that is to say without external stimuli. A 3 is given to a person who only opens their eyes to a verbal cue. A 2 is if the eyes only open in response to a painful stimulus. And a 1 is if they do not open at all. For the verbal response, there are 5 grades. A 5 is given to those giving cohesive and oriented responses to questions. A 4 for confused responses to questions. A 3 for random and inappropriate words. A 2 for moans and groans. And a 1 for no verbal response. Finally, for the motor response, there are 6 total grades. A 6 is given when commands for movement are obeyed. A 5, when a person can localize a painful stimulus by purposefully moving towards it. A 4, if they simply withdraw from the painful stimulus. A 3, for abnormal flexion in response to pain. A 2, if the painful stimulus causes extension instead of flexion. And a 1, if there is no response to pain. Other things that can be assessed in order to gauge neurologic function in a patient are known as brainstem reflexes. Your brainstem, for lack of a better example, is sometimes called your reptilian brain because its functions are so well conserved and important to your survival. These include the regulation of your heart, lungs, and blood pressure. Without the brainstem, you cannot survive. The absence of brainstem reflexes, reflexes so primitive and powerful that you essentially cannot consciously control them, is termed brainstem death and carries a very poor prognosis for survival. Brainstem reflexes that may be tested include the PLR or pupillary light reflex, which is where a light shown into a healthy person's eye should cause that eye's pupil to constrict. The opposite pupil will also constrict. You've certainly had this test done to you by your doctor. The corneal reflex, which is a reflex where the eyes blink in response to stimulation of the eye's cornea. You've experienced this reflex if someone jabbed you right in the middle of your eye. Try not blinking when that happens. The oculocephalic reflex, which is where the eyes stay focused on a certain point by moving in the opposite direction of the movement of the head. Cold caloric testing, a test of the oculovestibular reflex, which is when the ear is irrigated with cold water and the eyes should turn towards the side where the ear is being flushed with cold water. And the pharyngeal gag reflex is where the stimulation of the back of the throat produces muscle contractions at the back of the throat. 
In addition, the jaw reflex, tracheal cough reflex, and response to deep pain sensation are assessed for brainstem function as well. Furthermore, another test to assess brain death is performed by way of disconnecting a person's ventilator, allowing for carbon dioxide to build up in the body. This should normally force a person to breathe. However, a person experiencing brain death will undergo apnea, which is the absence of respiration. That's why this test is called the apnea test. Finally, there are neurological tests that don't just evaluate proper function of a person's reflexes or consciousness, but may actually be indicative of a particular disease process. One of these is a sign called Koenig's sign of meningitis. If a person is lying down on their back with their hip flexed, full extension of the leg at the knee will be difficult and painful in people with meningitis. Another sign we may look for is called Brzezinski sign. Again, if the patient is lying on their back, flexion of their neck elicits subsequent involuntary flexion of their hips and knees in cases of meningitis. So there you have it. These are the ways by which we can use neurological testing for many different reasons. You learned about the Glasgow Coma Scale, which is a scale that was designed to assess and monitor the duration and depth of a person's impaired consciousness or coma as a result of various disease processes. Then we went over important brain stem reflexes, such as the PLR or pupillary light reflex. A light shown into a healthy person's eye should cause that eye's pupil to constrict. The opposite pupil will also constrict. And the corneal reflex, a reflex where the eyes blink in response to stimulation of the eye's cornea. Subsequently, we discuss the basics of the apnea test, where a person with brain death will inappropriately undergo apnea, which is the absence of respiration, when their ventilator is disconnected and carbon dioxide is allowed to build up in the body, something that should normally trigger respiration in a person.